Welcome back to our Comic Gen toy review series where we dive deep into the world of toys and collectibles to give you our thoughts, character bios, special features, and articulation about the toys we love and hate. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the 2000X Skeletor from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Stay tuned! In the first mini-comics that followed the cancellation of the Filmation animated series, it's strongly hinted at that Skeletor is in fact Keldor, the long-lost brother of King Randor. During the Search for Keldor storyline, Skeletor watches as Randor and Adam search for their lost family member. But Skeletor states, They must never discover the secret of Keldor. Because the truth, as it's stated, will lead to Skeletor's destruction. In the Filmation series, the sorceress of Castle Grayskull calls him a demon from another dimension, Infinita, a cruel warlord who rules the dark side of Eternia from Snake Mountain with an iron fist. His title is Evil Lord of Destruction. He learned black magic from Hordak, the warlord of Etheria, the sister planet to Eternia. Skeletor betrayed Hordak after defeat by telling the sorceress and men-at-arms the way to Hordak's secret base. In the 2002 series, it's revealed in episode 1 that Keldor does in fact become Skeletor after a plan to throw acid on Randor backfires and splashes back burning Keldor's face. It's revealed that Keldor is in fact Randor's half-brother, sharing the same father but different mothers. Skeletor was formerly a warlord known as Keldor, who trained under Hordak. He gathered a small band of warriors to attack the Hall of Wisdom. They encountered resistance from Captain Randor and his officers. Keldor fought Randor personally, wielding two swords with astounding proficiency. But when Randor disarmed him, Keldor threw a vial of acid at him. Randor deflected it with his shield, and the acid splashed on Keldor's face. Cronus called the retreat, and Evil Lynn took Keldor to Hordak's sanctuary where Keldor summoned Hordak to save his life. Keldor agreed to pay whatever price Hordak wished for his life, and Hordak transformed him, stripping the damaged tissue from his skull and dubbing him Skeletor. Keldor's head had been completely stripped of soft tissue, leaving only a floating skull. When Keldor saw his new appearance, he laughed maniacally, the incident perhaps shattering whatever sanity he had left. Despite owing his life to Hordak, Skeletor destroys Hordak's sanctuary to prevent him from ever returning. At the end of the second season, King Hiss revives Serpos, the serpent god, who had been transformed into Snake Mountain by the Elders. Skeletor and his minions were inside the mountain at the time, although Serpos is defeated and restored to its Snake Mountain form. If season 3 of the series had been produced, it would have seen Skeletor and He-Man dealing with the Horde invasion, and the powerful Hordak who it was said Skeletor would eventually have defeated. In the 2012 DC Comics series, the origin of Skeletor, Skeletor's full backstory is revealed. He was initially the heir to the throne, but his father King Miro decided to make Randor king because Keldor was a half-blood, his blood mixed with Agar. King Miro even refused to believe Randor when he told him Keldor saved him and gave all the praise to Randor. Keldor became bitter and while dying of a curse, stabbed Randor and used his blood to become Skeletor thanks to Hordak. A line of toys that were debuted in 2008 to be sold exclusively on Mattel's collector website, dubbed Masters of the Universe Classics. Sculpted by the Four Horsemen, these toys are updated versions of everyone's favorite Masters characters. Although the Motu Classics toy line has yet no supporting fiction, the toys packaging do include short character biographies that merge elements from various different incarnations of the franchise, as well as some newly developed information to form a new, distinct classics continuity. Skeletor's bio from his card reads, Real name, Keldor. Mortally wounded in battle with his half-brother from the later mini-comics, Captain Randor. Keldor turned to his dark arts master Hordak to save his life, merging Keldor with the extra-dimensional being Demo Man, originally the planned name for the Skeletor character. From Despondos, Keldor was forever changed into Skeletor, overlord of evil. He gathered together the greatest outcasts and evil warriors of Eternia in his quest to gain entry into Castle Grayskull and obtain what he believes is the universe's ultimate power source. He is usually armed with a magical weapon called the Havoc Staff, a long pole crowned with a small replica of a ram's skull and a crystal ball embedded within. He can discharge bolts of mystic force from the head of the staff, or use it as a focus for more powerful forms of magic. Sometimes Skeletor displays the ability to discharge energy 
from his own body, as seen in the 1987 film where he casts lightning from his hands, and in the original animated series where he projects energy from his fingertips and even his eye socket. In the 2002 series, his innate powers seem much more limited, though his abilities, when in conjunction with his Havoc staff, seem nearly unlimited in scope and highly potent in raw power. In the early mini comics, Skeletor sometimes possesses one half of the power sword. From this weapon, he could also project magical energies. He also displays many other skills such as the ability to teleport himself and others over vast distances, send telepathic commands to his minions, open gateways between dimensions, or perform remote viewing. He has also shown himself to be a gifted swordsman. As a master of the mystic arts, he is also privy to much secret knowledge about the universe. Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon. I'm John Wise, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2000X Masters of the Universe, Skeletor. Okay, so um, by now you're familiar with the fact that in uh, 2003, I believe it was, or no, 2000, 2001, um, that they uh, redid Masters of the Universe, um, and they brought in these guys, the Four Horsemen, to re-sculpt the old He-Man figures. Uh, and they did so with Skeletor here. So let's go ahead and go over the sculpt here. Look at this guy. This guy is amazing. So let's get rid of these. We'll go over these here shortly. Okay, so first off, we'll go from head to toe. Look at the skull. This is just amazing. Um, you can see that they kind of kept the color scheme of the vintage figure, but definitely updating. He looks more menacing, uh, scary. Um, you can see he's got the yellow with the green. So that's pretty cool. He still has his crossbones on his chest. He still has this awesome loincloth with a design. Um, that's kind of very menacing. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, now this is the Skeletor without the boots. So he has his bare feet and the pads. Go to the back. I mean, look at the detailing on this thing. All around the loincloth, on the back. You got the gauntlets here. Just amazing, amazing work. There we go. Just amazing, amazing work. And uh, look at the little spine back here. So even that's pretty cool. And if you notice, we got a spot for his weapon, which we'll go over here shortly. So on all the sculpt and the paint job on this guy, not too bad. Articulation-wise, uh, we have head movement here. You can move from right to left. He has waist movement, which if you'll notice, when I move his waist, he doesn't swing back. That is not Skeletor's action feature. Go over that in just a moment. His arms can move out. They can go forward and backward. This one, however, part of his feature, you'll notice, yeah, go over that in just a second. I uh, did the waist. The legs can go out. They can go forward. They can go backward. There's no other articulation there. So, all in all, not, not too bad. I never have a problem standing this guy. So, look at that. So, and you'll notice also he's in the stance here. There is no ab crunch. So, still better than your five point articulated vintage figure. Now, what would Skeletor be without his awesome accessories? Okay, so first off, we have his Havoc Staff. Now, his Havoc Staff is actually taller than Skeletor. And this will fit in either hand, but I like to display it in this hand. Like so. Which is pretty cool. And I'll show you why I like displaying it in that hand. That brings me to his other accessories. Yes, he has more than one. <laughs> what would Skeletor be without his power sword? Wait a minute. That doesn't look right. Oh, wait. He has two. That's because this Skeletor in the animated series dual wielded swords. So these can go on both hands, but check this out. Just like the vintage line, these swords piece together. Just like that. 
and the of course that's because these were originally supposed to be uh, the two swords that were um, supposed to be fought over in the animated series so when they decided not to do that they gave him the Skeletor and these became Skeletor's dual wielding weapons of choice so now we'll go over here we can tell that this is supposed to be like the good good sword you can see some of the details here a little gear nice little orb skeletal sword very similar and of course like I demonstrated they just fit together you got two holes here and you got two pegs and they just fit together just like that and they do fit in his hand like so and he does look cool holding that sword however check this out there is a button on the back a Skeletor that all you have to do is just push the button and he can attack sometimes that happens so but yeah I mean this is a really cool figure like I said he can do a wield so if you want him to do so you can his left hand is more open than his other hand but I mean you can get both of those swords in his hands with no problem and like I said the Havoc Staff it can go, it also go in either hand depending on which hand you want to use and pose him with and of course he has a little bit more difficult time doing it because you know it's hitting the his leg so you gotta really you know rawr, rawr. <laughs> so all in all not a bad figure um i this is one of my favorite master of the universe figures i'm not gonna lie i just love the way he looks um the paint job they did an awesome job with that uh, the havoc staff uh i don't is also check this out you could move the head of the of the of the goat head there. That's pretty cool. Uh, most of these figures don't have uh, don't have the ability to stand right. You have to pose them a certain way. But Skeletor, I mean, I could set him down, and he's just fine. So uh, other characters like uh, Tila, for instance. Um, you really, and, and Shira, you really have to pose them a certain way to be able to make them stand. Uh, but thankfully, like the main characters, He-Man, Skeletor, um, characters like uh, um, Ram Man, Orko, don't have a lot of trouble standing them up. So, uh, overall, awesome, awesome figure. Um, these, of course, were, they came out in like 2001. Um so they no longer create they, they no longer make these um you can however find them fairly fairly cheap on like sites like ebay amazon um there are plenty of uh web uh, sites on facebook uh, like master universe trading <coughs> so uh this is something you want to add to your collection i say go for it that's really cool uh even if you're just you're not a overall he-man fan you're a skeletor fan this would be great to add to your collection so Buy me now! <laughs> Where's the bathroom? I have to pee! And of course, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button! Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends! <laughs> I hate you!